So the very first thing I did the summer I had a UC Davis degree is I was the maintenance man at a por apartment property and I had to paint all the curbs around the entire property with a freaking UC Davis education because I had nobody talk to me about that stuff and I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the knowledge that I had to align myself because sometimes the issue isn't your dreams for all of us. The issue is how we're aligning and strategizing for what comes next. Who knows that's some real talk, right? And then I just wanted to be a high school football coach. The direction, that was the direction, right? I was going. I didn't apply to be or go anywhere. I have actually never applied and interviewed for a job in my life. Never, not once. So all I wanted to do was be a high school football coach, right? And teach life skills and teach what football taught me, which is what I teach now all across country. And because I did that, some guy named Dan Hawkins, who's now back at UC Davis, he called me up and he goes, hey, we have a graduate assistant position here for $380 a month. Would you come here and be a graduate assistant, be a football guy? I need a minority graduate assistant. And I was like, nah, I just want to be a high school football coach. That's all I want to be. Limited vision, lack of commitment to something bigger than myself, and audacity to reach for some shit that I couldn't even think about. Like Division I football? I went up there and there was a cat named Seneca Wallace that they were playing against in a bowl game of Iowa State. Seneca Wallace played and was a great quarterback here at Sac City. So I knew about him. And we were breaking down film, a guy from UC Davis. We basically played at Toomey Field, which is a high school football field. Now their football field is amazing. They got a 1AA program now. They got scholarships. I, we, were, we were all there non-scholarship. Okay, so I flew up there and we're breaking down film of the Miami team that won the national championship in 2002, 2001 versus Seneca Wallace in Iowa State. My girlfriend and I just moved into a one bedroom apartment and her family divorced her for moving in with a dude who's 27 years old and she was 21. I came back home and I told that girl that left her family for me the only way I'm gonna make $100,000 because I thought $100,000 was the key. That's all I knew, knowledge, right? I gotta go take this job, making $385 a month and trying to get my master's so that I can be this American dream. This is what I wanna do. She cried and she goes, how could you? My parents don't talk to me anymore. I'm not saying this shit's going to be easy. I'm just saying this shit's got to be worth it. Commitment, right? Do you want to better your life or not? They called me from Boise, Idaho. I didn't know where Boise, Idaho was. Polynesian grew up in the streets in Pomona, came to UC Davis. I didn't know where Boise, Idaho was. I said, cool, I'll get on a plane, come check it out. Okay, got up there and it was freaking phenomenal. 125 wins and 18 lessons in 11 years. Talking about whipping ass and taking names. Learning success principles for life. Not just football, but for life. That's why we won so much, is because we taught life. We played Adrian Peterson and DeMarco Murray in the Fiesta Bowl in Oklahoma in 2007. I walked out during pregame to see their athletes like I normally do anytime as a linebacker coach. And I went back in and took a nap because I never seen human beings that big in my life. But then we stayed committed. We planned to win that game. We won that game. We went 13-0 and in my first year ever. I made $380 a month for the first three years of my college football career. For 10 months out of the year and the other two months, I did camps around the country because I was committed. But that wasn't even the destination because that direction took me to this destination. As we're talking about character, integrity, work ethic, discipline, respect, and commitment, I'm telling you, not because I say so, life has taught me this, that when you apply these principles, faith and self-belief, life struggle, teamwork, transformation. If I change, everything changes. You know where I got that from? I lived that. When I first met my wife and then she moved up to Boise two, hours, two years later, when she moved up there, we could only afford a $420 one bedroom loft and we looked at a futon that we couldn't afford that was 125 bucks. Now we need two 18 wheelers to move from one house to another. 
And I'm saying not look at me, look what I've done. I'm saying why not you and whatever it is that you dream, hope, and aspire for. At whatever age you're at, at whatever or however old you're at, no matter what your gender is or current position, question what it is that you're doing. And like my man was saying is, I apply this to my personal life so I can figure out how the very best that I can be. And sometimes it's not, that commitment is not for us, is it? But for our kids and our spouses and for our others that are very important to us. So now, as we talk about that, let's go, who is next on that side? Who's reporting? Right here. Let's go. Let's report. So we discussed that the character, respect, integrity, commitment, worth ethic, and all those things work together for oh. being who you are. And they all have something in common that helps you to be committed, have respect, integrity, and worth ethic. That is awesome. Here's the number one question I get. What is the one thing? That's why everybody, they want the one thing. This is why I teach 16 life lessons. For all of us, that one thing could be different. And the combination of these things, these 16 life principles, we're not going to get a chance to go over all of it, but you can look at these slides, apply it to yourself, change it. Change the words. Make it more applicable to your life and what it is. The combination of living out these life principles. And if you get off track, which who knows we're going to get off track. Get your eyes back on track. Get back on track. Because we all are going to get off track. We are all human. That is what is the part of our humanity is that we are going to get off track. In my faith, it's called all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what they say in the Bible, right? But basically, in slang talk is you're going to mess up. And when you mess up, get unmessed up and get your ass back on track. That's the coach in me. Yes, I love you. I care about you. I want you to be hugely successful. But even more than success, I need and want for everyone in this room to experience joy, peace, happiness, fulfillment, and love. Because what is, what is the success and achievement if you ain't got the juice? Right? What is it, really? You know what that success and achievement means? Nothing. That's the irony. All these championship rings, when I die and you stand up on top of any bridge that goes over the fire freeway, you know what's going to stop? Nothing. Nothing's going to stop. That's the great irony about this thing called life. It doesn't matter if you're Kobe Bryant or you were a part of the NASA team that was one of the first colored women and women to take people up into space. These people die every day. That's part of our humanity that this thing does have an end game. I've won a shitload of games, but I know this. Nobody wins versus death. Nobody. So we must live to the full. And if you don't want to, cool, because the rest of us are going to be trying. You do what you got to do for you, we're going to do what we need to do for us. Back. Well, they all, they all showed like something about their household and like how their family works. And, like, I think they all have an like, equal amount of like integrity and responsibility that they hold. It's really like nice. They all like have their own part in them, like they unite in like, their own way. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about going into politics? <laughs> that's a great way. You're bringing people together. Yeah, that's right. You talked about having your own business. Would you please share? Yeah. Um, well, my parents are from Nicaragua. Come on over, Lila. Good. And um, I want to bring like, their culture over here because it's something new, something different. And I really like, want to do that this couple of weeks. Well, this year. Mm -hmm. All right. Give it up for her. Okay, so every group has shared, correct? Every group is shared. Okay, we got two minutes. So um, I'm going to write down uh, my email address and my cell phone number. My apologies that we didn't get into all of the stuff that we planned on doing. Uh, but my commitment to you is that if you have a question on, on the PowerPoint, you can call me directly and let's have a jam session on the phone, me for coffee, uh, especially the high school kids. Uh, maybe we can connect. I would love to take you and this entire group out for lunch. Um, we can go out and hang in fellowship. And if you would, before you put away your notes, and we got about one minute and 30 seconds, is write down this one concept, don't quit. Okay, 28 industries that I've been. I have success coached uh, right now. 
I have five national brands with Umqua Bank and pg and &E. It's going to be a national brand that I'll be coaching within the next three months, including uh, they're looking at the Secret Service as well as they're looking at me being their success coach in all of their offices. NASA has a Palo Alto office, Houston office, Pasadena uh, office, I believe. They're looking for me to be their success coach. So when I visit with all these people, if there is a one thing, this is a close, is don't quit. Because when things go wrong, as they most times will, and the road you're trudging seems all uphill, and when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when life is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Because life is weird with its twists and its turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. I see many a person, this is what they do. They turn about. When they might have won, had they stuck it out. So don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You will succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it appears to a faltering woman or man. But you see, the struggler... He or she has often given up when they might have captured the victor's cup, but they did not know until the night came down how close they were to the golden crown because success is failure turned inside out in a silver tint in this thing called doubt. And you never can tell how close you are because it may be right here, but it will seem so far. But stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. My name is Coach V. One love. God bless you all. Mad respects always. See you next time. Billy, I'm the folk out there. I'm a two-year-old. They call me Coach V.